Hi, I'm Richard Patel, I'm a consultant here at Nebulous, and today I'll be showing you a new feature of Palo Alto Network's Panos version 6 called DNS Sync Over. Hi then, it's me Rish. So, what you see in front of you here is a typical network diagram where you have a client, internal DNS, a Palo Alto firewall, big bad internet, a malicious host out there on the internet, and a public DNS server. Now, let's have a look at what an infected client typically does when you enable spyware threat detection on the Palo Alto. So, a client will initiate a DMS lookup to the malware host. So, it will send its DMS request along to the internal DNS server. And that DNS server will then redirect that request through the Palo Alto to a DNS server which is further upstream. The key thing here, guys, is that when that DNS request comes back to, through the Palo Alto, the Palo Alto will always see the internal DNS server as the suspicious host, rather than the actual client who is actually initiating that traffic. So a new feature of the Palo Alto Network's Palo Alto version 6 is called DNS Sync Holding, and that's what I'm about to show you in the screencast. So the first thing we need to do is to create a security zone. This security zone will be responsible for routing the suspicious DNS traffic from the client to the sinkhole IP address and it will also be responsible for logging the suspicious DNS traffic from the client. The next step is to create a security rule which allows the suspicious DNS traffic from the client to go to the sinkhole IP address. You also need to make sure that you're logging this rule. Next, we need to create an anti-spyware profile. Uh, this profile will enable sync holding for suspicious DNS traffic. So we go to Objects, Security Profiles, Anti-Spyware. Now you can either modify an existing one or create a new one. So here I'll modify this existing one. Go to the DNS Signatures tab and under the Action on DNS Queries, select Sync Hole. Next, give it a sinkhole IPv4 address and a sinkhole IPv6 address. Uh, this address must be uh, an unused IP address in your network. Uh, you don't have to have an actual host related to this address, it's just the unused IP address that we need. Accept those changes and then all we need to do is apply this to our outbound internet rule. Testing DNS sync holding is straightforward. All we need to do is simulate our client going to a suspicious domain name. In this example, we'll choose bestexchangercheap.net. This is an active suspicious domain um, deemed by Palo Alto. So we perform the NS lookup, and as you can see, the reverse record we get back is the sync hold IP address we specified earlier as part of our configuration. And just to verify this, we can actually look at the Palo Alto threat logs and you should see an entry for the suspicious DNS query going to that domain. Now to simulate actual data going to the suspicious domain, we can simply perform a ping from the client. So we'll do that. As you can see, we've performed the ping and the destination IP address is a sinkhole IP and we're not getting response back because when we configured the sinkhole IP we didn't actually specify any real host behind it so that traffic isn't going anywhere now we can look at the Palo Alto at the traffic log and we should see an entry for the sinkhole rule we created and this rule will then be able to show you exactly which clients are potentially infected So thanks for watching guys, I hope that was of use. If you want any further information, or if you want to contact a member of our team, then don't hesitate and click here. Hmm? Yeah, I want to talk about that. I'll be showing you a new feature of Panorama. Why am I saying Panorama for? It's not called Panorama. <laughs>